Hey there, Nate with Staple, back for the fifth installment of why you should be using OpenSense as your router or firewall in your network. And today we're going to talk about the built-in reporting capability of the solution. And we're going to go over some of the components that I think set it apart from other, other products, either open source products or other products on the market. Um, so we're here in the dashboard. So on the left, we're going to come over to reporting. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to configure some of the settings that we want to make sure are set so that the traffic or the data that we're capturing gives us uh, useful information. So first, let's go here to settings. In the settings, this is where you configure the basic health information or health data, health reporting data uh, for the system itself. So you'll just want to make sure that it's enabled. and by default, it's going to add all of these default uh, reports. So traffic packets, traffic packets for each of your interfaces. OK. Um, and then for any gateways, it adds this, these quality reports, which is basically a measure of the, the latency and uh, uptime and delays in the actual connection out to the Internet. OK. All right. Now, the second thing we want to do is we want to go into this NetFlow section. And this is really the, the part that kind of separates the OpenSense platform from many of the other systems out of the box. Of course, NetFlow is something that a lot of solutions are capable of uh, after you pay license fees and set up additional infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas OpenSense builds this particular feature right into the, into the software. And so there are a couple things you're going to want to do. I'm going to go ahead and enable, enable advanced mode, and we're going to show the full help so we can kind of walk through each of these, these uh, settings here. So the first thing is, what interfaces do we want to capture data on? Okay, Meaning, when traffic comes in and out of an interface, um, do we want to capture the NetFlow details. And so you're just going to come here and you can uh, click on one to select it or deselect it. You're going to go through and, and um, select all the interfaces you want to listen on. I'm going to add the internal Wi-Fi. So here we're listening on all the interfaces that I care about. Okay. Next, we want to make sure we've defined which of the interfaces are our network connections and I happen to have two of them and the value of this is that um, it just tells the system where our where the the data is leaving out of the firewall okay so these are our two WAN interfaces you may just have one uh, and it may say something like uh, WAN uh, or uh, could be like opt two or something like that but you're going to look for whichever interfaces are the uh, interfaces that are connected to your internet connection. Capture local, you're going to want to enable because that tells this feature to capture the data onto the firewall itself so that we can process it. And version 9 version versus version 5, the difference here is version 5 will capture IPv4 data, which is probably relevant to your environment v9 does for and ipv6 data so uh, i would just go ahead and do version 9. the destination here when you enable capture local it's going to add the what's called the loopback interface of the firewall itself so basically that says hey when you capture the data on this interfaces because we're capturing it local send to this device the device that the firewall is running on. So 127001 is what's called the loopback address. That just means the local device. And then 2056 is the port that the service, the NetFlow service, is going to listen for data being sent to it. Okay. Um, active timeout, you can keep the uh, defaults here. You can change them. This is just saying, hey, uh, every 1800 seconds, start another file, start another cache file. 
an active timeout is saying, hey, there's no data after 15 seconds, go ahead and expire it. Um, and on the cache side, this is just a view of um, the, the various data files that the system is, is capturing. And if you refresh this, you'll see that these counts will go up or down. All right, great. Now that we have both our round robin data set and our NetFlow, now we can start looking at the information. So here um, is the health, and health is metrics about the system itself. And so it's going to tell you things like, okay, how many packets are coming uh, in and out of the WAN, in this case, interface, and you select the interface that you want to look at up here. Um, you can zoom in, so we get 20 hours, that's this whole graph here, or let's say we wanted to see 60 hours, right? So from May 11th to today. So back here, and then inverse, what that does is instead of stacking the in and out data, it'll put the uh, in data on top or in the out data on the bottom, right? So for this interface that we're looking at, WAN, we've got data coming from the firewall and then going out of the firewall, the bottom splits it. You can see out pass, in pass. And this is just the date. So the top section is the hourly view. It just gives you what time on that specific day that's being shown below. So if we change this to 60 hours, you'll see that on the 13th, um, you get less granularity, but it gives you more a larger view of the data. Resolution up here, you can change from medium to high to standard. Um, okay, if we go to quality, this is, this is an interesting one. So this, this shows us um, between our WAN interfaces. So if I'm, I've got the, the WAN, the Verizon, and it's showing me um, some helpful information. You know, how much data loss? I don't see really any data loss over time, over the last 20 hours. It's moved to 60 hours. And the graph itself is pretty consistent. So we have, um, you know, delay is very low, 4.9 milliseconds. Uh, I'm going to turn the inverse off so we can kind of see it. Um, so we have, you know, 4.9 milliseconds. That's that's pretty good latency. And so let's let's compare that to the Cox connection. So if we go to WAN DHP, whoa, a lot of loss. There's some loss there, up and down. And if we didn't see so much loss and we looked at this graph, you'd see a lot of up and down uh, here. So now you know why I use Verizon. Verizon is fiber, Cox is cable. And so, you know, if you hear, you get a salesman calling you about fiber connectivity, if you can do it, I highly recommend. It's just a better technology overall. Much more consistent, high, more uh, performant, and uh, overall better experience as long as it's up and running. Okay, system just goes over uh, you know various metrics about the hardware or virtual machine that you're using to run your run your firewall. So memory, free memory, active, uh, how much data on the wire, etc percentage wise. So here this is memory, you can choose processor, mbuff, that's the number of uh, packets in the buffer, the percentage of its use. A CPU temp, this is a virtual machine, so um, system's not picking up any CPU or you know physical hardware monitoring or sensors. Um, and then this is our our state, so how many connections um, there are on the firewall. And then traffic, uh, this just gives us a, kind of a high level overview of traffic coming in and out of various interfaces. So we have 2 meg, 1 meg, 2.2 meg, etc. Now, perfect segue, traffic is, is where we get into the detail is going to be in the insight component. Okay, and so now that we've gone over the health data, which again, you can see is useful, but it doesn't really give us a whole lot of good detail. It just kind of gives us that very high level sort of dashboard type insight. So now we're going to go into insight, which is where the 
net flow data is being analyzed for us, okay? And so it's um, the simple interface. And I just wanna point out a few things here. Um, first is you have our tabs at the top. So the totals, these are the pre-configured graphs that we get um, for the flow data coming in and out of the interfaces. Details is where we get to see, okay, for that data, you know, give us a little more detail about IP addresses and ports and stuff and dates and times. And then our export tab where we can actually take that data, export it to our to a CSV file to analyze the actual data and, a, and get more, you know, graphs that we want. So let's start here and we'll just go over the interface uh, a little bit. So at the top we have um, breakdown of uh, date and time period. So this allows us to sort of get um, fairly granular, right? Last it defaults to last two hours, so it's given us two hours of data, and it's just showing the average every 30 seconds. Uh, and then you can go all the way up to a full year, which is interesting. So I have had this running for a year, but we're going to turn it back to the, the last two hours. All right. Now, this is overlaying here because I, I'm zoomed way in. So if I were to zoom out, refresh. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, those little little graphs, that might be a bug in the system or something. But go to 100. Well, I'm going to zoom back in so you can actually see this from like your mobile device. Uh, all right, so here we've got the last two hours. And um, you can see interface total so it's giving us bits per second and as we go over these you see this pop up and it sort of gives us okay there's how much traffic on this interface at this time um, was flowing in and out of that interface okay and then right here you have these three options stacked stream and expanded so if we do stacked it sort of takes all the data and it puts it into a single stack of a, vi a visual stack okay if we change it to stream um, it kind of gives us this uh, sort of accumulate accumulative effect of the data right so this is a stream this is the data that's coming in during the last two hours and then if we do expanded it goes and it gives us for each interface what the data looks like over time okay so again, in is data coming from the firewall, right? So from various uh, interfaces like the LAN, WAN, etc. Out is data going through the firewall, okay? Um, and so there is a little bit of double counting going on. And if you read the documentation here, um, I think it's in configure NetFlow, it sort of goes over and explains um, right here, you know, select the interface you want to collect and export data. If you do not want to record traffic originating or going to the firewall itself, then add the interfaces to egress only. Okay. And, um, that's here in the NetFlow setup. We're just going to go back into the insight and kind of go over this. So we'll start back at where I, where I started, uh, explaining what stacked and streamed meant. Okay. And then, so here, in the interface total section, you see these additional three options here. We have stacked, stream, and expanded. And we'll just very quickly show the difference between them. So stacked gives you, basically accumulates all the data into a stack. And so this big bump here is the total of all of the data. A stream is like an accum accumulative effect here. So we have this data coming in, we've got a bunch of stuff happening, and, it, and now the, the cumulative stream is is bigger right and as we get up here continue to go it's just showing us a cumulative effect and expanded kind of gives us a breakout of each um, interface and the data coming in and out okay all right now if we come down here to the top usage ports or top, top usage ports and sources um, this is where we get into sort of analyzing exactly where traffic is coming from going to and what type of traffic. So it defaults to the LAN and you can up here choose the interface that you want to look at. We hover over this, it, it kind of shows us a breakdown of, of the traffic type. Okay. 
and this is the source. And if we click on this, it actually takes us over to the details and, and shows us the breakdown. Okay, for this source, here's where all the traffic was going. And then it breaks it down by type, etc. Um, and same for UDP. If we wanted to look at, okay, where is UDP traffic coming from and going to? Um, and so here you can see, oh, well, there's UDP traffic going to the um, VPN at the data center uh, and then coming back to the external interface. That's being double counted a little bit, right? So I have traffic going out and then coming back to the WAN interface, going out from a particular uh, source inside the network, coming back to the external interface um, of, of my local firewall here. Um, okay, so that's totals. Very cool. You can, again, change the interface. Um, and it gives you, you know, a good way to kind of dig into the details of where traffic is, is um, coming to, going from. All right. And if we go down here to traffic, this is where we get the sort of the live view of what's happening on the network. Again, part of the NetFlow um, data set but it's doing it in real time. And if we go up here to uh, interfaces, we can say, okay, I wanna see what's going on on the Wi-Fi and the LAN, okay? If I choose that, now we can see, okay, we're, cat we're showing you data on these two interfaces. And if I go to the top talkers on those interfaces, it's gonna show me, okay, here's a top talker and this is the interface they're on. And you can see, oh, okay. And it just starts to give you all the traffic either coming in, going out, where it's coming from, what uh, destinations, um, what sources. And since I, I'm only looking at the LAN and the internal Wi-Fi, I'm not actually seeing traffic from the Internet because I'm not, I'm, I'm not uh, filtering it. So if I wanted to see, okay, I bet these folks are going out to the Internet. So I'm going to choose my, my WAN Verizon right and now i see what's going on if i come here to um top talkers and we give it a second to start to populate we'll be able to see okay well here's traffic coming oh there's traffic on the on the interface oh it's coming from here it's coming from here uh compute amazon aws a very powerful um insight into what is going on uh, in real time with your network. So this would be cool if you're experiencing performance issues. Let's say, you know, people on your internal network are, are having really slow issues to the internet. You could come in here and say, okay, well, show me the LAN and the WAN and what's happening. Who's taking up all the bandwidth or where's the traffic going to? Extremely useful when you're troubleshooting. And that's it. I think that's probably enough for now. Um, just wanted to show you that. Very cool, very useful tool. Again, OpenSense makes it simple. It's, it's very straightforward, and their documentation really on this particular feature is very good. So I encourage you to go here to their documentation, go to the reporting section, and just walk through each of these um, sections. And so that, that'll do it for uh, episode number five for why you should be using OpenSense as your firewall. Hope you stick around. Please subscribe and uh, let us know if there's anything we can do for you. Um, take a look at the description. There's some links to the documentation. There's links to our, our website. Um, anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Stay free.